Good morning, friends. It is September 4th and the end of summer is upon us. That doesn't mean that the gardening is over. There's a lot to do in the garden still. And I just want to give you a tour of what the garden looks like in the end of summer. The main crops from summer have started to die back. The tomatoes are dying back. The squash is almost all dead. The eggplants never did anything for me this year, but the corn, it's 11 foot tall. This one's gonna be more of a vlog style video, so I'm just gonna be showing you around my yard and showing you how things went this year and what things I'm thinking differently to do next year. This year was a very challenging year for me in the garden. There was a lot of drought in the beginning of the season and then we had a lot of rain and then we had a drought again. Right now we haven't had rain in three weeks. We had a quarter of an inch about a week ago and that didn't do anything. And I don't like watering that much because I don't want my water bill to be $300. So I collect some rainwater and I use some rainwater, but the lack of rain has really affected my growing this year. So I wanna show you what the challenges have been this year and I'll show you a couple of successes I've had too. Just for reference, if you're new to the channel, I am growing in Northern Virginia. I am growing on red clay soil and I amend the soil with compost that I make here on site. And just recently I brought in a large shipment of compost that I'm gonna be adding to the beds as well. Since we have it in the frame here, this is my corn that I'm growing over here. And I'm growing this long, long bed here. It has grown to 11 foot tall. I know that because that bamboo piece over there is 10 foot tall and it surpasses that by about another foot. I've had quite a bit of success with getting the corn to pollinate. The birds were eating the, the little tassels, but I was able to collect some of that pollen and hand pollinate a lot of these corn. And this corn is the one that you would use for tortillas. It's the traditional tortillas. So this is not a sweet corn, this is a flint corn or dent corn. And I will be making tamales and tortillas out of this one. Check out how many I got. I have quite a bit. I think I did plant this a little too close. These are planted about 10 inches apart and only 10 inches apart from there. My dad suggested that I do about a foot apart here and the beds themselves should be about 20 inches apart. So I will do that next year. But I did pretty well with the corn and it's kind of late in the season but I think it'll still have enough time to ripen. One huge success this year was the okra. I got so much okra this year and I have been pickling it and I've been giving it to friends and relatives. They really enjoy it. It does so well here that it would be silly not to grow it because it, the potential for food, it's so great. I have this row of tomatoes here and they only started producing about a month ago. And check out these beautiful tomatoes that I have in here. These are San Marzano tomatoes. I am planning to make tomato sauce with these. My wife and I really enjoy marinara sauce and that's what we're planning to make with these guys. My three sisters garden is already dying back, but I have the beans that are kind of being left behind here. I'm letting them dry, so I'm gonna eat them as dry beans. I've collected several pumpkins from my three sisters gardens already, and I already harvested the corn that was in here. I didn't get too many. I think I got like six ears of corn out of this bed, but it's only three by five. Five ears of corn out of that is pretty good too. And I have the biggest pumpkin of the season right over there right over here is the biggest pumpkin of the season I'm estimating that this will be like 25 to 30 pounds <laughs> it's so ridiculous it's so huge it is an heirloom Salvadorian uh, pumpkins and typically we eat these with uh, molasses we cook them down as a preserve here is the biggest pumpkin of the season I'm looking forward to eating this one. My mom really enjoys these, so I'm probably gonna give it to her and she will turn it into something delicious. In this bed here, I did the video of the fall garden and a lot of pest issues this year. I have a lot of flea beetles here, but I don't like to spray for, for flea beetles, so I'm just letting them have their go at it. In a few weeks, when the weather gets really cold, the flea beetles will die back and this won't be an issue anymore. So here we have my fall garden in full force 
and hopefully I'll start eating some of these leaves and hopefully I'll have a crop later in the season. This is my little wall of beans that I have going on here and check out the little trellis I made for them. I made this bamboo trellis and I am trying to grow them over here but I think I planted them a little too late so they're not growing on it but check out next year I'll start them early enough and this whole trellis will be full with green beans. That's gonna be lovely. From my raised beds, I've already harvested some bok choy. And look at how beautiful this bok choy is looking. Huh? Isn't that amazing? The nights are getting cooler, so they're definitely happier now. This is my spinach, and hopefully it doesn't bolt. And I can eat this all winter long. Check out how beautiful the lettuce is looking. I love growing lettuce in the fall. It does so much better than any other time of the year. So if you haven't planted your lettuce yet, make sure and put it in the ground. Check this out. I have tatsu here and this is damage from a cabbage moth. And what they do is they lay the eggs and then the little guy, oh there it is, there's a the little guy right here. This little guy is a cabbage moth and they eat the leaves. So what you want to do is find them and get rid of them. Feed them to your chickens if you have one or just squish them because they will eat every single stem. But like I said, I don't like spraying for anything. So I just do visual checks to make sure that the worms are not here and if they're here, I try to get rid of them. Now we go into the back orchard and we are greeted by this Mexican sunflowers. Check out these beauties. I've always wanted to grow these and last year I asked my friend to give me some seeds and she did and now I have this beautiful Mexican sunflowers and they bring in the pollinators as you can see here I have another one right over here and check them out they're here working as you come in into the garden you're greeted by the wall of hardy bananas this is masu bazu and I'm hoping to use some of these leaves to make some tamales this right here is taro. I, I bought the roots at the Asian grocery store. I sprouted them and I have them growing here. I am hoping to get a nice harvest out of them this year. You eat the roots. This is a Chicago hardy I bought from a big box store in the spring. And look at this. It already has figs and this one is going to ripen very soon. There's another one there that's going to ripen very soon. They are super tasty. This right here is my Jerusalem artichokes and those things are probably 12 foot tall and I'm hoping to eat a lot of roots out of that. That is from one tuber that I planted last year. Last year I didn't harvest any of them because I wanted them to reproduce but this year I'm going to definitely be eating some of the Jerusalem artichokes and these stalks are amazing for biomass and for chopping and dropping or just adding to your compost. They add a lot of nutrients to your compost. So it's a double function plant. Over here, my milkweed is loaded with pods. And I saw a couple of monarch butterflies flying around. I don't know if they laid eggs or not, but they have the option to do so if they, if they want to. Here's Kayla the dog. She's always hunting the rats and the mice. We have the compost piles here. I have four going right now. And I definitely need to make another one because I'm gonna start the cleanup process very soon. So what I do is I just choose a pile. I add to that one as much as I can until it gets full. And then I start a new one. So these have been going since the beginning of the spring. And check out how beautiful these are. They're gonna be ready to go probably in about two more months. And that's gonna be perfect because I can lay the compost in the beds and use them to grow next year. I have a North Georgia candy roaster that is hiding here behind the fence. This is the only one that I'm gonna get this year because last year I complained about how many I got. Well, nature said, well, this year you get no more. Uh, I might get this other one over here, but it's kind of late in the season, so I'm not sure if it's gonna ripen or not. So we'll see what happens. Look at this okra over here. I definitely missed a few, so these will become seeds for next year. This right here is my peach tree and I think it grew another five foot this year. It's getting super big and when I bought it, it was just 
down to there so it was about three foot when I planted this into the ground but check out how beautiful it is it did produce a couple peaches this year but it didn't hold on to them and it dropped them so that's okay hopefully next year we'll get some peaches this peach right here I planted from seed to replace one that died on me and I planted this from seed this spring and look at this caliper it's already a half inch this beach is probably four and a half foot tall. Check out how nice it is. And it was just planted from seed this spring. So if you wanna start some peaches from seed, they grow really fast. This bed right here is where I grew my tomatoes and peppers. This got really weedy and I got very little peppers. So next year I gotta get more serious about the weeding back here. But check this out. I built this trellis here and I got several tomatoes out of here. Most of the tomatoes are dead now, so I have to come in and clean this up, add some compost to the bottom, and plant my fall crops because I am running out of time. <laughs> These right here are African drum gourds, and I don't know if there's going to be enough time for them to ripen, but these are going to be used for little containers. Uh, they, the shell turns really hard, and you can make little and baskets out of them. They're beautiful. I have a couple of big ones here. Oh, check that one out. That one's nice and big. So I, I am hopeful that I'll get a couple of these. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool if I'm able to make some baskets out of those. These are my lar yard long green beans. And the problem with these is that um, the, <laughs> the, uh, the African drumsticks took over. And once they did, the beans stopped producing. So I got to be more careful about planting things too closely next year. I never learn. This right here is my gala apple and it's so tall. I will be trimming it down when it's dormant in late spring. I have my dwarf pear right here and this one has not grown very much. It's very slow growing. This is a commis pear and I'm excited about this one. This one is a Asian pear and this one got decimated by the rodents in the spring. The rodents ate every single bud and almost lost and I almost lost the tree but somehow miraculously <laughs> it continued to grow and it's put out that little limb there and that limb is probably 10 foot tall. It's, in, it's insane. This is my other three sisters garden. You can see the corn stalks are left in here and I have a ton of green beans that are growing in here. Check this beautiful flower out. These are my green beans and I'm letting them mature and I'm saving them as dried beans. That's the easiest way to preserve these. Check out this amazing crop of long beans that is growing right here. <laughs> these green beans, I recommend these rather than the regular green beans because once you get one of these green beans probably equals six of the green beans that you can grow. <laughs> the bush beans so and they taste just about the same so it's so much easier to pick one green bean and be done with it the greenhouse doesn't have its plastic right now but I will still have the frame here and check out how much I am growing in here right now the hope is that I can put in the the plastic in here and start growing some winter hardy stuff in here pretty soon but check out these cayenne peppers I started this cayenne peppers from seeds that I saved and they are doing amazing. I have sweet potatoes in here, I have mustard greens, I have cucumbers and what else do I have? So much other stuff but I really am saving the space for the winter crops. Right in here I have this humongous wall of green beans too and I can barely get through here nowadays but check out how many dry beans I have here. They're doing so well. And I am very happy with this year's bean crop. The grapevine did well this year and it probably grew another seven foot going that direction. I did get two clusters of grapes and these are supposed to be seedless conquer grapes. And guess what? They have seeds. <laughs> That's okay. They are really tasty and I'm going to be making preserves and hopefully some wine out of these. So stay tuned for next year's wine recipe. The front garden did really well this year. I definitely did not get as many eggplants as I got last year. The flea beetle ate the little tiny leaves and that really stunted the plants. So I didn't get that many eggplants. But I'm hopeful that next year I'm going to get some fabric to cover them and hopefully keep the 
flea beetles at bay. At the front, I still have this beautiful San Marzano tomatoes growing and they are doing quite well. I, I think having them separate from the other tomatoes has kept them really blight free. So I, I didn't get as much blight at the front. So next year I'll definitely copy this and grow another tomato row, maybe on that one. So I'm not planting in the same bed again. Here I have my winter vegetables growing. These are cauliflowers. Hopefully they'll start producing a head very soon. These are collard greens. And here I have some parsnips. And then check out the baby little eggplants. I have just a few in here. That right there, my friends, is a cabbage moth. And that is the one that produces that little green grub that likes to eat the cabbages. So they're beautiful, but they're annoying. This bed is where I grew the purple japonica corn. So I'm getting ready to plant into this one pretty soon again. I just added some compost to amend the soil. I was worried that I wasn't gonna get any pepper harvest this year, but they are just starting to come in now and they're coming in hot. Check out these peppers. These are, I think these are the choco peppers, chocolate peppers. They're sweet peppers, so they're gonna be eaten or frozen to be eaten later in the season. Check out these peppers here. Wow, these right here are amazing peppers. Caribbean sweet peppers. They are so tasty. And when they are ripe, they turn red bright red so i'm excited about these little guys i've been saving seeds for this for about four years now they are amazing i have more sweet potatoes here and over here i have my pomegranate tree some lacinato kale and more peppers check out that one over there that's a marconi pepper beautiful I still have zucchini plants growing. These were planted very late in the season in order to beat the squash borers and I think we are succeeding in that. This jalapeno plant here I overwinter from last year. So I put it inside in a pot and I brought it outdoors and check out this beautiful jalapenos. Now I'm going to be eating jalapenos for a good while. This has been my pride and joy this year. These are my beautiful artichoke plants. Check out how beautiful they are. This is the only one that survived the winter out of five plants that I had planted here. And these, this is the only one that survived and hopefully I can cover it again this year and it will come back next year. This is what the front lawn looks like right now. This is my front yard and you are welcomed by the zinnias and a wall of okras. I have so many okras growing in this line here. <laughs> Next year I definitely have to do something different because I grew way too many okra. Check out this sunflower that is growing here. Huh? What? That's so beautiful. Okay, and check out this wildflowers that I have at the front too. My wife is responsible for the flowers, so we gotta thank her for the beautiful flowers that we have at the very front. And that is the end of summer tour of my garden there's a lot of successes this year but there was also a lot of failures but you got to remember gardening is all about learning from your mistakes and trying differently next year what did you learn this year in your garden comment down below i want to know those lessons that you learned so i can learn from your experience are you planting a fall garden i also want to know if you are planting for the fall or the winter my goal here is to grow year round so I am very busy right now starting seeds in trays to put out into those beds that you saw that are empty. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and that you're following so that you can see those updates. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. See you guys on the next one.